Dude, that's skeevy. After that, she just walked back to her office and shut the door. Like it almost like almost slamming it. <laughs> Maybe she's not a fan of you queer types. Carl puts on a southern draw for the types. last bat. La last bat. <laughs> last bat. <laughs> got my voice got infected. I step out of the car and pop the trunk, moving to gather up my equipment. The sun is starting to get pretty low at this point. They're not, there's not really any tall mountains to the east, so Echo's sunsets tend to last a while. Maybe? But she seemed alright with Flynn. Whoa! Golden hour, Carl. Beautiful light. That's a trip. He's so soft. <laughs> Ooh, so soft. Carl follows suit. Though his eyes are still glued to his phone. I can't get over that whole there's a boy in your car bit. <laughs> keep the door keep remember to keep the door your 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 door your win fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> remember to keep the door to your room cracked open so we can hear. <laughs> Don't be making out in there. <laughs> yeah, she seemed kinda I don't know, weirded out with me or something. But she was <laughs> the language center of my brain is just shutting down. <laughs> just having dumb moments where I'm like, get the fucking sentence out, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was such just, a train wreck. Like keeps deteriorating over time. <laughs> it's funny now. <laughs> see next year see you next year. Uh but she wasn't like that when she when we met. She was just she's pretty cordial then. As I shut the trunk, I spy Flynn's truck parked behind the house, as well as what looks like a faded yellow moped. Oh, that was, that's yep. a... I had to double check, like, moped? Moped? <laughs> Why is it moping? I assume that that one's his roommate. Wow, and he rides a moped? That's cool. What is he, the protagonist of the Da Vinci Code and no one else ever? That is the, not even the first thing I think of when it comes to mopeds That's at all. That's exactly what I think about. There, there, there's That's... so many mopeds in the Da Vinci Code. There's constantly using a moped. And it's like the only book I've ever had a reference to a moped before. And it comes up so much. I think of uh, Roman Holiday. Uh, when I think of the Da Vinci Code, I think of mopeds and loafers. <laughs> Just words that got come up a lot in that guy's books and nowhere else. <laughs> loafers. Loafers. It's the shoes he wears. I think I wear lo I think loafers are technically what I wear now. I'm not sure. Uh, your uh, Vans. The yeah, the, the the laceless shoes. I think those are yeah. I think, I think those, those might are loafers. be called loafers, but I'm not sure. It's just huh. no one uses that word anywhere else. Huh. The Ram huh. shrugs. Loafers, huh? <laughs> You're kind of weird. Maybe you did that uh, staring thing you do sometimes. Everyone's just coming Fucking after Carl. Chase now. Carl sees it too. I blink. The what? Never mind, man. Everyone's just collectively over this, but they all talk about it behind his back all the time. It's one of those things. I frown. Carl looks up at his phone long enough to catch my expression. I'm just kidding. Just making fun of Flynn's whole dressing you down back at the river. Except it's true, and you should feel bad. Carl smirks. His eyes are no longer glazed over, and it actually feels like he's looking at me rather than a thousand miles away. We make our way to the front door, Carl tapping away at his phone. Sorry, yawning. <laughs> Hard to imagine my house was even bigger back in the day, though. My parents already have more rooms than they know what to do with. Like, we've got three spare bedrooms, right? But we never have any guests or anything, so they don't get used and get and just gather dust and stuff. Do your parents ever make you clean them? <laughs> Carl rolls his shoulders, idly wiping his hooves upon the rough palm fiber floor welcome mat. Sometimes. Knowing Carl, that means pretty much never. Once inside, the familiar hot, stuffy climate hits like a wool blanket thrown around me. What sounds like a sort of lo-fi hip-hop is playing in the background, from what I assume is Daxton's room. Oh, he's hella hip. With his <laughs> moped and his lo-fi Yeah, lo-fi chill beats to study slash relax to? <laughs> Look at him go. The interior is dimly lit with the exception of a bright white light coming from the ajar fridge. Daxton stands next to it, holding a block of pale cheese. Yum. I is this what you need? The salamander seems to be peering at us expectantly. Uh... 
No. The answer was definitely yes. You raise you just buy chomp into this cheese. I do. Chat down on this chat. <laughs> yeah. I have blocks of cheese I just buy for myself and they're like, like no one no one can use them because I have my bite marks in them. I just <laughs> like you can see my bite marks in the cheese. <laughs> It's like an animal got in. Well, it, like rats. Yeah, yeah, with, with big old Stephanie. chompers. Well, it's like, you know, I want like a snack. So I just go down and I grab like my block of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if, if someone draws a lotus, I'm just biting into a block of <laughs> Dude, cheese. See, you talk it's her goat cheese. <laughs> you see my cheese for goats. <laughs> <laughs> I do also like goat cheese. That'd be extra ironic. <laughs> But you can tell you got my little, my little buck teeth on there. You got my little overbite. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. No. <laughs> my face hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this unusual? <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know the story of your unshareable cheese. Well, yeah, something. you can fucking try to share it, but good luck. You have to cut around all those bite marks. <laughs> Just this cheese menace. <laughs> I don't need to write my name on it. Everyone, you just know. <laughs> uh, for context, I'm the odd man out, and that I use the garage fridge, so I just don't know the fridge etiquette or ecosystem. I mean, very granted, well. I think because of my disgusting <laughs> habits, I have a drawer that is my fridge drawer because I do shit like that. To quarantine it. Yes. <laughs> your, your huge goat cheese. <laughs> He raises a brow ridge, <laughs> craning his neck to look past us. Uh, talking to Flynn. <laughs> you fucking awkward weirdo. <laughs> Main character syndrome much, Chase. Why do you think everything revolves around you? Yeah. The Gila's large self. Gila's large self. I don't know why it's, it feels weird hyphenate. I don't know. The Gila's large self steps out of the laundry room beside us, looking to Daxton. Oh, sorry. Carl gives a sidelong smirk. That's the provolone. The recipe needs Harvati. Hell yeah. Havarti. Flynn's. <laughs> Woo! Havarti! Havarti got like party! A, you got like a Woo! foam thumb. <laughs> a foam finger. You're Provolone's I, but not as your good. shit over Harvati over here. I love Havarti. <laughs> Flynn steps past us without much acknowledgement, moving to the kitchen beside Daxton. We have a block of Havarti, but it's in the freezer. There's this thing called a defrost setting on the microwave. Yeah, but you left the fish you caught all on top of it. The pack is sealed. That shouldn't matter. The whole freezer kind of reeks. Like I said, the package is sealed. That shouldn't matter. Roommates. <laughs> Roommate scenario. Just the, the friction of just like, oh, isn't having a shared space great? This cheese is going to smell like fish. Mm, I love all this egg on the sponge. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I'm confused because I've never heard people keeping cheese in the freezer. I don't know. Do yeah. people do this? Maybe it's because it's, well, I was going to say maybe because it's so hot in here, but that's still the fridge. I don't know. Is there, is there a freezer of cheese? Maybe it's just to keep it longer. Is there longer? Che cheeser <laughs> cheese? Maybe it's, maybe it's to keep it for like the long term or something. I mean, I put bread in the fridge sometimes. Like the defrost setting. Are you going to try to chop into a block of frozen cheese and then defrost that? Or are you going to try to defrost it, you, you have chop to... off of it, then refreeze it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, Sound off in the comments. I don't do like you freeze your cheese? I, I do not enjoy volumes of cheese, so cheese does not come up very much. I, I rarely use blocks of cheese in any context, so I'm just not used to this. Like, I, I'm bad. I just, like I said, I always... Cheese, is, cheese I feel like, is very... Um, you know, to to keep to keep the pleasant consistency of the cheese. I feel like freezing it's gonna fuck up the texture Maybe. because you're. It's, I feel like it's gonna expand and then shrivel back up when you defrost it. In the same way that like putting like 
like like my mom used to like freezing grapes because she liked eating frozen grapes but i was always, always be like sad because i'm like can you keep half of them not frozen because if, <laughs> if i ever want to eat normal temperature grapes they're gonna be all shriveled up my Would friend you like asked a frozen me, grape at first i said no but then i said <laughs> yes because i would like a frozen i would like a regular grape later i was literally gonna make that joke. <laughs> my favorite my friend Mitch asked me if joke. I wanted a frozen banana, and I said no. But then I realized I want a regular banana later, so I said okay. <laughs> Stupid. I fucking love that shit. I kind of want to freeze grapes now and try that. Yeah, they're fun to eat. I just want to get um, a bunch of grapes and freeze them. But I'm yeah. also like stupidly sensitive to think like this is too cold. I'm just really bad at so any I food that involves them. planning ahead. <laughs> but I, I don't like. I don't, yeah, I don't like. I, I like easy cheese. I have some singles. You like spray cheese? I, get, I like to no, <laughs> but I like cream cheese. I like a uh, uh, mozzarella. Sour cream. Shredded. I buy, I buy cheese, shredded but... cheese. The majority of the cheese I buy is already is is either cream cheese or shredded. But sliced. Just prepared. The pre slices of cheese for sandwiches. Yeah, I, I, I'll get I'll get American cheese sometimes. Like I said, I just like Judging to eat, eat, eat cheese <laughs> on its own, so I just buy yeah, cheese no, to eat. Yeah, no, no. Whenever we did the charcuterie thing, I'm like, hmm. Hmm. I'll play along, but. <laughs> when, you, when we do the charcuterie thing, it's usually eating a like. a volume of cheese. Half feels of weird it ends up being meat, which I don't eat, so I'm just there eating cheese the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Which is fine. But for it's me, totally I, I just want like a couple pieces of cheese that I just dig into like the crackers and the salami and whatever weird sweet thing came out. There's, like, there's some like kind of strange treat. I'm like, I'm curious about this thing. or like jam that you can put on top of the cheese yeah. or like, I like almonds and I, 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 I like, like somebody help us with cheese. this cheese. I'm like, that's not my job. Oh, look <laughs> that's at me. That's her job. Hands up. She's the curd meister. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the whitest bitch that's ever lived. I eat all the cheese. My gut was made for it. I hope you guys enjoyed the cheese tangent. Sorry. Everyone leave in the comments about how you like the cheese tangent. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us if you freeze your cheese. I really actually do want to what know. What is fuck? Yeah, what? Do people do that? <laughs> Give her new cheese lore. It could be important for her lifestyle. It might be important. Tell, tell me your favorite cheese um, related story. Yeah, unlock the pleasure she didn't know that she was missing out on of frozen cheese. Oh, that, sounds, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> With a shrug to Carl, I move in and set my equipment down next to the, ki the kitchen island. I take a seat on one of the wicker-topped bar stools. Carl lingers in the entryway a bit before moving to sit on the stool next to mine. Flynn wordlessly goes to the fridge and grabs two bottles of light beer, popping the tops and setting them down in front of us. Light beer, Flynn? Yeah. Yuck. Thanks. I'm not 21 yet, legally, you know? What does that mean? Wait. What, Carl, what does that mean? You smoke weed all the time, are you? What is the Carl, weed what is, age? Carl, what does that mean? What? He's 20? He said that weird. He said that weird, right? I'm Why you say legally? not 21 yet. Like, no it, one it, says that. I think he means like technically. What does that mean? What does technically not 21 mean? <laughs> Flynn shrugs uncaringly before ba getting a beer age? for him. I'm looking... What is the weed age? Looking around, the countertops are pretty free of clutter beyond some Meseta Community College letters and a heavily used black notebook. Uh, you said Meseta, like the tribe, instead of Mesa. Oh, Mesa Community funny, College. Oops. But, um... The weed age is 21, but then I realized Carl's probably getting his stuff from a dealer, so he's the yeah. weed age is irrelevant. I, for, I forgot that he's... Yeah, his parents aren't helping him out there. He's, uh, he's getting it all from... What's his name? I almost said Keith. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of names in my life. It's too many names. Yeah, it fucking take Stephanie right off your brain. Just yeah, don't, like, need, don't need that name. Yeah, Throw that, that, that one's out. too Clear out too, space for too fictional much. furries. <laughs> <laughs> just, now I'm just that one girl who lives yeah. in the house. She. <laughs> she. Uh. J not Julian. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't remember who he's getting. What his is his from, name? <laughs> but. It's uh, the Fox. Jenna's brother. Yes. But also, we live in California, so the thought of having to buy weed off of a person is so far away from me now that I forgot that people still do that in states where weed's not legal. Yeah. 
Well, in 2015, in this case. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's weird thinking that there's that Carl could be under 21. I for I I'm weirded out. By like, that. I guess we I guess I shouldn't think about the word legally and just think to just take as a fact he's just not he's just 20. I think I guess. he just threw in an extra word because he's being yeah. weird. That's just a weird word to put in that sentence. <laughs> just like, what, like what? I'm, I'm 21 What illegally. were you born on a leap year? So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 48. Uh, like, just like, <laughs> I'm actually born on, on uh, February uh, 29th, so I'm three. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, if someone Some pulled pull that like on that. me, I, I would just punch him in the shoulder. I'd be like, you're an idiot. That's the, stupid. The notebook is labeled World Building in Fictional History 204. A few water stains have shriveled the edges of the pages. Daxton places the provolone back into the fridge and places the allegedly fishy Harvati in a plastic cutting board. Meanwhile, Flynn is now at the sink washing vegetables. Daxton grabs a small knife and finally glances back at me. Welcome back, Chase. I wave a bit of limp I wave a bit lip <laughs> I wave a bit limp wristedly. <laughs> he just flops his that five hand times. back and forth. Say that ten times in a row fast, like Jesus Christ. Bit lip bristedly. Limp biscuit. Limp biscuitly. <laughs> limp biscuitly. <laughs> hey. He smiles, then shifts his gaze to Carl. The ram looks up from his phone a little apprehensively. And, uh, hey, uh, I've seen you somewhere, but I forgot your name. San... Sam's something? Sam's Undertale. <laughs> <laughs> Coral. He answers, his voice quiet. Oh. Well, good to meet you. Usually you're kind of in and out of here real quick, like, when you do come by. Carl shrugs. Yeah, same. The ram's gaze flicks back to his phone, Carl typing something. Daxton frowns slightly before shifting his focus back to cheese cutting. Carl, you're being so awkward right now. <laughs> just hang. Daxton's just, eyes got real big. Oh no. Oh, that's sad Daxton face. He's like, oh, we're not going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you, Daxton. You're the route character. Unspeakable horrors probably happened to you. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, you're in for, like, you, your association with this group makes you in for a ride. Yep. You chose horribly. You chose your roommate very poorly, and it's not just because he's a dick. <laughs> it was in the fine print of the rental agreement. Mm -hmm. Must Look, go on a haunted, like, a scary adventure <laughs> at some point. The most unrealistic thing that has happened in this entire scene so far is the fact that Flynn is still wearing his tie. Yeah, he, like, I was surprised when he put it on for the first time, so the yeah. fact that he's had it on so long in this... Just the, this is weird. Just all the rep, just the way that people always talk about, like when they live alone, like they they get home and their clothes just explode off. <laughs> like Flynn would immediately have that shirt open again. That tie would yeah. be gone. Like in, in his hot house, and he's like, he's cooking now. He's doing stuff now. He's like, fuck off, tie. You're out of my life. Get out of here. He's the thing where like he sexually like tucks his finger underneath the knot, like pulls it down, like in a zigzag yeah. way, and he's like, oh. <laughs> maybe he like he, he like flops it over his shoulder while he pulls out a frying pan and buttons his shirt, which I is know. not what you should do when you're frying Never stuff. Never been so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Looking over, it looks like he's texting. <clears throat> the contents of said message being that <laughs> Carl's pretending to text. Yeah, I know because he's so he's, feel, he's feeling hella you awkward. awkward little shit. Oh my god, just say hi. Just, just, uh, it's fine. Hey, Carl. Flynn looks over his shoulder, scrubbing at what looks like a cucumber. You got your outfit picked out for the interview on Saturday? Aw, uh, Flynn's still looking out for him in this timeline about this. Yep. We don't even know what's happening the rest of the time. Yeah. Wait, what? Carl, you have a job interview? Yep. I find myself smiling a bit. Carl didn't didn't tell me about this at all. I'm surprised he didn't mention it earlier. Because he's racked with anxiety about it. <laughs> yep, it's always freaked out about it all the time. That's why he's high right now, even more so. That's great. Where at? In the other timeline, he misses it because he gets kidnapped. <laughs> Carl stops typing. His lips putting up, pulling a bit tighter around the edges of his muzzle. It's in Peyton. A uh, Peyton print and design. I'd be like printing copies and making people posters. Oh, the print shop by the mall? I know of it. What do they pay? Minimum wage. Not that it matters, though. Daxton looks slightly confused. I turned to him. Carl's parents are pretty well off. 
Flynn stops what he's doing, going to the fridge and taking out a box of strawberry popsicles. He drops it down on the counter beside Daxton, the salamander startling some, looking to Flynn, then the box. It's, he keeps popsicles for Carl. Oh, that's... Like his strawberry oh. shake and stuff. Like your strawberry lemonade. Like he like... He's, like he's got a... He, like he's, he keeps stuff for Carl specifically. Uh, it's like the equivalent of like Carl having clothes at Flynn's house. <laughs> that, that is so... He says he probably has a toothbrush too. <laughs> for, for when he has sleepovers. Flynn points to the hen's ice cream. Oh, no, it's it's because it's Carl's oh, ice cream. Never mind. Oh, I thought he... Oh, I thought, I thought had, it was romantic. I thought he had juice boxes in there for him, too. And some goldfish they crackers. Call it, they call it hen's ice cream for Hendrix. Carl flints to the hen's ice cream. Flynn points to the hen's ice cream label above a logo with a weather vane and a chicken on it. Like a human chicken? Or a chicken chicken? <laughs> I don't know. Are there birds in this universe? I, 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 I've asked that before, but... I, I guess we've never met a bird person. We've met a bat. They've all been mammals. <laughs> Bats are also mammals. Well, no, I know they're mammals, but, well, yeah. but they, they're a flying thing. So, I, like, yeah. I mean, why can't birds exist? Carl's parents' company. <clears throat> Daxton lets out an astonishing, an astonished huff, looking for some sign of fib on Flynn's muzzle. No way. Way. I'm the ice cream boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his smile. I'm the ice cream Look boy. Look at his stupid little smile. <laughs> I'm the ice cream boy. I'm the <laughs> one who eats. What if like um you know like the um the the sunscreen with the little girl with her butt out on it because the little puppy's pulling and he's down. Just on the what, what what if he's like that? But like in their, he's like oh in their God. logo. He was the chicken on the weather vane. You're just giving people ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> Daxton, Daxton blinks, seeming to look at Carl in a new light. That's really cool. Carl looks off to the side, then back to Daxton, then back at me, then back to the side, then back to Daxton. Two tickets to that thing you love. <laughs> now it's diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> We're dating ourselves. The, yes. So many people are not going to understand old that now. At, at younger ages, but also because younger people are like, what the fuck's a commercial? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Glad you think you, you so, don't just block I guess. Those? <laughs> you didn't just skip them? You push, just push skip? Flynn takes the popsicles back to the freezer, <clears throat> returning to, to his station in the sink. Just make sure the clothes you got all fucking fit right. Can't remember the last time I saw you dressed up. I wonder if they picked out clothes together. That would be really, like, you took them shopping. Yeah. We gotta go to Burlington Coat Factory to pick out a little suit for you, Carl. It fits, dude. My parents drag me to all sorts of black tie event stuff where I have to stand around and lie about my career goals. You haven't done that in ages. I went to the charity gala thing two years ago. You mean 20 pounds ago? Oh. Wow, sick burn. Most of it's muscle. I'm not calling you fat lard ass. <laughs> I think you are. I think there's a few subtle context clues that... <laughs> I'm saying that when it comes time for the interview and you come in with a hoodie and cargo pants, they're gonna think you don't give a fuck. I mean, I kinda don't, you know. Oh, the fuck you don't? You really looking forward to disappointing the shit out of your folks again? Damn, Flynn. They're used to it. Carl needs Flynn, honestly. <laughs> Not just for lunch. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Daxter, Daxon and I exchange an awkward <laughs> glance. Awkward. Daxon, you're spiking the camera. Stop. I'm half tempted to follow Carl's lead and start pre pretend texting. You worked at the freight warehouse for years and were miserable. Clam can't blame me for not looking forward to the same sort of thing, huh? Yeah, but he got Leo pets. Got pet on the head and quoted The Fault in Our Stars. <laughs> yeah, don't you want that for yourself? Carl veins a raspy chuckle, though by the jittering of his hooves against the bar stool, it's apparent he's tense. I, no joke, I think I cut, I cut this, right? I think I cut this. I had John Green quotes in my Ad Astra video script at one point. Did you? Yes. Oh, I am Flynn. <laughs> this is why I'm like, oh my god, this is so endearing. I, I have read every John Green book. All of them. 
and listen to the podcast, and it got you to listen to the podcast. The podcast is good. It is good. He's a good writer. You just like his nonfiction, but still. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I've had to, I'm surrounded by people that hate John Green. <laughs> Cloud Cuckoo Country. One of the people I've done videos with. Uh, he specifically has an entire video, just uh, like a video series, just for sh like shitting on uh, Turtles All the Way Down. Like, people vehemently hate John Green. Like, he's, like, fucking the author of Twilight or something sometimes. I, just, I don't like young adult novels. Like, I, sure. I, didn't, I didn't do that whole thing. You I know? just like his writing style a lot. I like the way that he phrases everything and thinks about things. And that is the majority of every book. None of his books have ever had a plot yet. That's interesting. <laughs> Doesn't know what a... I don't think he knows what a plot is, but whatever. Like, I went from... Uh, the series of unfortunate events right to uh, Mosquito Coast and Native Sun were like the two first I just went right to uh, god damn you went from a ch like straight from a children's book to just going hard yeah because well because I was really I was really interested in classical literature like I have that a thousand one books you need to read before you die and I used to just read that book to get ideas for other books to read yeah so I just really like you know Let's see Carl feigns a raspy chuckle Though by the jittering of his hooves against the barstool, it's apparent he's tense. And now I have my own house! I see his slitted gaze shift briefly to Daxton, who looks like he's concentrating very hard on cheese cutting. Daxton's like, I pay part of the rent. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to reach out to Daxton, I'm like, don't worry, this is extremely normal. This is how they always are. This is, this is how the relationship this works. Isn't, like, it's not, it's, I don't even know if this is even awkward, honestly, at some point, <laughs> with how often it comes up. Mostly. And print and design. That's basically working with the same computer shit you do for your art crap. When you're drawing big titty goth girls with the footlongers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if someone will ask you for a poster of that. Yeah. You'll, I mean, someone will have you print it. <laughs> I mean, when I wanted uh, my, when I wanted furry art printed and foamed back, I sent it to a professional company that does signage. What is that shirt of Chucky? Finster I just shirt? I, yeah, I just should keep the picture of Chucky Finster shirt and why Daxon shirt makes me think of Chucky yeah. Finster shirt. Maybe it's a reference. Maybe, but it's it's a white why? shirt instead of a blue one. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I, I, I can't I can't look at Daxton and not think yeah. of Chucky Finster. But pro tip, there's a bunch of online printers that do like signage for stores and stuff, and you can use those places to get like foam backed prints in the mail for pretty cheap, just of your fursona. Like they'll they'll print it. I guarantee that they'll they're, just do it. They just, that's like an interesting day for them. Like they're they're like they're printing like, out signs like, for like the fuck? for like local shopping, like local businesses and like discounts on groceries. And then all of a sudden yeah. they get like a, a sign request and it's like like, it, like some you've seen fucking... my video essays. That's what the Disco Elysium prints are from too. Is I also just printed them from the same place I ordered pr print art, art art prints of marrow and stuff. I just went. I can just do that. Some some old lady at the print shop's getting like yeah. requests for a uh, giant cocked like. <laughs> I don't know if they'd be happy with that. Uh, but uh, the, well, uh, I mean, but the old ladies you, uh, might like the big <laughs> cocked bull man who they're making a print of. But if you uh, if you you just might take a couple attempts if you don't know much about like CMYK or RGB or like the weird color spaces and brightnesses, you might get a weirdly dark print and have to try again. Because, I don't know, I fucked one of them up. Uh, seeming to note an opportunity to diffuse, Daxton chimes in. You're an artist, Carl? Shit, by like, the loosest definition of the term, I guess. I have a gallery on Flesh Affinity. <laughs> we, know, we know he browses that site. Flesh affinity. Yeah, the, the equivalent of fur affinity. Yeah, that brings up so many questions. Yeah. Again. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see the human- oh wait, that's a bad example. <laughs> I was about to say, I can't wait to see the, the human form of Shiro, which is the character from BNA, who has a human form. So, <laughs> that's not really a surprise. Uh, Flynn just rubs his temple some, shifting his attention back to cooking. He places the freshly washed vegetables into a metal pot on the stove, with one of those steamer lid things on top. What kind of art? You don't seem like the oil-based pastoral type. Shit, you don't know me. Carl blinks. I hear Flynn grunt derisively, then clicking the stove top audible, the clicking of the stove top audible as he turns the nozzle for the gas. His heavy tail flicks behind him, 
lightly slapping the floor. I realize he's trying to get my attention, his eyes meeting mine, then moving to Daxton and finally flicking a textbook by the by the dishwasher. <clears throat> Art History 101. Historical Perspectives and Fundamentals. Glancing back, I think I see the corner of Flynn's mouth twitch up at me before he turns back around to his pot of vegetables. It's still kind of weird seeing Flynn in a work outfit all the time. In high school, he was more of a jeans and uh, jacket kind of guy. Whoa, what a, like, on a motorcycle, like, bruh. Uh, so, what a hunk. A southwestern rockabilly who didn't like rock and roll. Okay, that, okay. <laughs> what the fuck, Flynn? Rock and roll's cool. <laughs> but also, I, I like that... He, I'm like imagining him as a rockabilly. That's pretty cute. His work slacks are pretty baggy and definitely hide the definition of his legs. And some other things, you know. Flynn's got a V-shaped physique through and through. Narrow calves, but thicker thighs and a sizable rump. When he bends... <laughs> this is a, feels like a weird time to describe this. I thought we were going to do the art thing. When he bends forward a little, I can see the outline of it all. This is art. The lewd side of my mind is starting to wonder if he's doing it on purpose. But why would he, after what he said this morning? Uh, pa pastorals? I'm not very good at backgrounds or anything. <laughs> Portraiture, then? Very snazzy stuff, that. Oh, Daxton's art book. Yeah, no, yeah, right. no. Yeah, no They're I'm... hinting that, that, that Daxton knows art. And it's, he was like, this is Flynn planting the seed for them to like try to talk about something I was like I was like wait, I was like hang on a minute wait what I was like did he get it did he get Carl an art book like no he's trying to get like Chase to step in and grab the art book and like make the conversation keep going because Carl's gonna drown it <laughs> like <Her>. Sydney <laughs> <laughs> Salamander <laughs> smiles at Carl showing his rounded cheeks uh, Carl just looks at him confused um, I decide now is a good time to interject and spare Carl from Daxton's entry-level college art class and qu inquiries. Carl draws pop culture character stuff mainly, I think. I haven't really checked out his portfolio profile in a while. Um, he draws OCs. Superheroes, comics, that sort of thing. It's really good stuff. Impeccable line art. It's not. He pauses, shifting his phone to his paws. Akin to roly, rolling putty. Since superhero movies became really popular, everyone draws that stuff now. Most better than me. It's kind of a dead-end style, I guess. Can't make any money from anything I make. Carl sounds more like he's quoting something rather than stating an actual opinion. Uh, probably because his parents say that to Why him. Why don't you just make money online doing commissions, loser? Yeah! You don't have to leave the house, just go. You you could all all the like the big titty like big dicked girl <laughs> like that all that studying is gonna come in handy when he has to draw some some OC. Half the people I've paid for art are literally younger than you. Scary. And they're better than you. And they're up for blood. Uh, Daxton raises a brow, <laughs> nodding in acknowledgement. If you if you want to be good at art, one of the worst things is seeing other people online and, and comparing yourself. It's just a, it's just bad. And then they all have their age in their bio, and they're all younger than you. They're There's, all laughing at you. They're all laughing at you. There's a pause, the only sound, the bubbling of boiling water and Daxon's knife hitting the plastic cutting board. <clears throat> well, not if you draw them with their clothes off. <laughs> Daxon's on the money. The salamander tries to put his most innocent face. That lasts for about three seconds before breaking into a wry smile at Carl's groaning, the ram taking a long swig from his beer. He's grinning now, too, though. Everyone online tells me that, but I don't know, man. Every time I try to draw Chaos Wolverina's tits, they just look like big-ass furry eyes stuck to her chest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this drawing. <laughs> I don't like that sentence. Daxton laughs. And I find myself chittering a bit, too. You could try drawing guys instead, if women are giving you too much trouble. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Chase? I don't like superhero stuff that much. But I do like dig. Well, I wouldn't judge you if you did, Carl. I've run a few awkward sex scenes in my day. 
you're a writer? That I am. At least, trying to be. I'm taking creative writing courses at Mesa to get better. The folks really wanted me to go into marketing like them, but I'm not really into it. More into visual novels? Just stares into camera. <laughs> That's lucky. I'm having to go into debt, so I'm not sure if I'm that lucky. Hopefully one of the books I'm working on sells well. Most people don't read these days. Yeah, but you know who does read is the producers that read the cover of the book and they're like, I don't know, sounds like a good movie, and then they say make somebody else read it to make it a movie. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a future in, re in writing and that you write the thing that somebody else turns into a thing that people actually buy. Yeah, Enjoy. Stephen, Stephen King. I think he makes money off of the books too. <laughs> well, no, no, no. The, he, he makes money off of the books. In fact, I don't think he makes money off of the movies because he sells them for a dollar, right? Yeah, well, he has a joke where he'll sell the rights to the story for a dollar, but that helps sell his, sell his books. And I think he also can get royalties off certain things. So it is actually a very smart move because the, the reason that there are so many Stephen King movies is for the sheer per like he just lets anyone that do he it. lets anyone do it for basically no money. Yeah. Which is very nice. That's fun. Well, it's cool because it's like I like my art so much. I want other people to be able to use it and interpret it, and I want to be able to see those interpretations. Yeah. Unless it's The Shining, in which I hate Stanley Kubrick forever. Just kidding. <laughs> no, well, I know I, I, what I'm saying is I don't. Stephen King hates Stanley Kubrick forever. Seems unnecessary. <laughs> because he hated his interpretation of The Shining. Hmm. Which is wrong, because that's one of the best movies ever made. Fight. That I will fight Stephen King. Stephen in, King in the marketplace of ideas. I love you. I love Creep Show. But dude, you're wrong. The Shining is well, it is so good of a movie, it <laughs> surpasses your book by a long shot. Fight me, Stephen King. The salamander places the cut up cheese upon slices of rye bread, then puts the bread on a cooking tray, sighing as he looks to Flynn. You're gonna bake it? I want baked cheese. <laughs> Not everyone can suffice off coming home from work and staring at the wall for hours like you, Flynn. Some people like some degree of mental input, yeah. What? Flynn flicks the stovetop off, his eyes lulled as, and his brow ridge furrowed. Daxton passes him with the tray of rye and harvati, sliding it in the oven. It, it sounds nice. <laughs> I don't know if I like rye bread that much. Just, just the baked bread with cheese seems neat. Sourdough. You call him the shit you write mental input? Don't make fun of his smut. <laughs> the Gila stops what he's doing, squinting at Daxton. Did you defrost that Harvati or did you just seriously spend the last past 15 minutes cutting into a frozen block of cheese? This side of the house is like an oven with the habitat. It it's habistat. on purpose! It's on purpose! They should capitalize it, though. Whoa. I do agree. And put TM next to it, because I want to see it. What a setup and payoff <laughs> for it's a, this it's, session. It's a miracle. <laughs> this side of the house is like an oven with a habitat running like it is. The cheese warmed up on its own after a while at room temperature. Now we're going to find out that there's just actually a thing called a habitat we just never heard of. It's, I'm gonna like, fucking it's like regional or something. Look it up. Flynn throws up his hands, visibly exasperated. It wouldn't have taken you 15 damn minutes to cut a few slices of cheese if you just defrosted it. Are you in a rush or something? What do you mean about him staring at a wall for hours? The salamander looks standoffish now, his arms crossed. My question seems to have been ignored. <laughs> Might be. Keith. What? Habasat are long-standing suppliers of high-quality reptile and tortoise housing products across the UK. <laughs> It is that joke. <laughs> Habasat. Yay! It is a lizard joke. I wonder if they knew if they knew that. Because it is capitalized in the real world. Weird. As a product. <clears throat> I feel I feel so happy now. Full circle, full circle. Whoa. Daxon, what what sort of stuff did you write? Surprisingly, Carl is the one to butt in this time. Daxton turns and gets out some plates. Mainly science fiction and fantasy. You know, you know Ad Astra, right? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> well, Ad Astra exists as a movie. Does he write, like, fan fiction? 
I, I don't think he's saying he's a, he wrote Ad Astra. I don't think he's saying that. Oh, he's saying like like he's Ad Astra. He's likening to Ad Astra, but I was just like, it's so fucking weird to acknowledge I want him to, Ad Astra. I want him to be writing fan fiction. It's it's because <laughs> now the word Ad Astra exists in this setting. Like before, it was a background detail, like an Easter egg. Like a, it was just a visual. Yeah. But they didn't say Ad Astra. I don't think in the movie in the movie watching scene. Like, well, it was they, just, they, we just we just realized oh, what they yeah. were watching. It was like the the background was like the wolf like palace or whatever well they were going to go see a sci-fi movie yeah like in space but now we're just talking about Ad Astra which is just like in the same session where we also had the smoke room like which makes more sense because it's the same setting we're also now interacting with Ad Astra and I don't know what to do with that Carl takes another drink of beer rubbing his beard and thought uh sort of I don't really watch it myself it's that space exploration starship show from the 60s with the sexy aliens. So in this world, it's Star Trek. Yeah. In this world, Ad Astra is the equivalent of Star Trek, but hornier. Even and hornier than Star Trek. Yeah, which is already pretty horny. Daxton snaps his fingers. Yes, that one. People draw a lot of porn of them. Oh my god, are we diving into the history of, like, shipping? Is that what we're going for? Because that's the role that, uh... Star that, Trek plays. Yeah, in like real that's, life. that's like the origin that, that of shipping. Origin of to shipping. the point where like the original like zines and conventions were like really heavily based around like these like middle aged women that were that were like shipping uh, Kirk and Spock and stuff and Fuck doing yes. entire like like mag like they're they're making zines about it and everything and there was a whole like extended like fan fiction back pre internet like that, that stuff was wild. I'm aware. <laughs> so it's, like sad about it. I'm aware. Or is very aware. I'm <laughs> aware. That's what, what the inflection do I want to use. I'm aware. Anyway, I used to watch it a lot with my little brother growing up. Got into the whole peace in the cosmos through science thing, something fierce. The stories for each episode were based on real science. That's definitely not an Astra. <laughs> That's definitely not Star Trek either. The salamander finishes setting out the plates, bumping his fists together and smiling a bit sheepishly. I'm taking a few physics and engineering courses at Mesa to try to better understand it all from my own writing. Makes sense. I also really liked the whole diplomacy pact. The ultimate goal of all first contacts was peace and learning. You don't see that much anymore. Yep. First contact. It's the prime directive. Yep. Um. Frontier. Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Damn it. R.I.P. R.I.P. Lost Thought. Like, this one episode from season six of Frontier is a really good example of that, and it really inspires a lot about what I'm writing in my story. My phone vibrates in my pocket. A message from Leo. Hey, you're not at the motel? A sort of sinking feeling takes hold in my chest. Are you looking for me again, Leo? I can feel Flynn looking at me from over the counter as I type my reply. With Carl, Daxton, and Flynn about to eat dinner. Flynn's the last one mentioned in that list. He's trying to add more and more names adding, between him yeah, and no, Flynn. No, that is smart. <laughs> that is smart. When, um, I, when I look up again, Daxton is still chatting away to, to Carl about the Ad Astra episode, but I'm not really paying attention anymore. He's serving up some steamed vegetables and the fancy cheese bread fresh from the oven. That was fast. I guess it's just melting cheese. Yeah. The bread looks a little burnt around the edges, but maybe it's supposed to be that way. That's what I always say. Of course you are. Dude, mm. that, 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 that's a mean girl text. Uh, of course you are. It's the first time he's ever used a period. D. <laughs> <laughs> I get really worried about that whenever I hear people mention that because I, I don't think about punctuation at all. So I'm like, am I accidentally leaving passive aggressive punctuated no, messages no no but leo very specifically has not used any punctuation and besides question marks until now it's mainly about context like the worst one you can get is like k period yeah that means they're fucking pissed at you it's, it's, not, it's not just like k like okay whatever like a negligent like k it's like yeah. k dot yeah fucking run god welcome to the third round of leo being a lot <laughs> My fingers reflexively squeeze tighter on my phone. Flynn quietly walks around the counter, stepping behind me to look over my shoulder. At first, I think he's going to say something, but he doesn't. He's silent. 
With a sharp exhale, I begin typing my reply. We can all hang out tomorrow? Found some interesting stuff for my project at City Hall. Flynn makes a noise, but I can't really tell whether it's of encouragement or disapproval. <laughs> like, eh. Need to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I reply. K, period. <laughs> what about? Leo responds almost instantly. You know exactly what. Oh man. Hmm. This makes this is the kind of text that makes me want to flee the state. <laughs> uh, this stresses me out. It's time to find a new home. Like vicariously no. stressful. <laughs> I don't like this feeling. So much. At this point, I realize Carl's looking over at my screen as well. I'd call him and Flynn both out for being rude were this any other time. Daxton, meanwhile, just looks at us all with a concerned expression on his face. What's up? Don't worry about it. Carl and Flynn both look up at me expectantly as my thumb hovers over the reply button. Should I even respond at this point? I have no clue how he could have found out about Flynn and I, if that truly is what he means. Probably because of every other point of evidence. <laughs> it wasn't that well keep a secret, kept a secret. Leo's never really been good at getting this, his point across through text. He failed many in English class growing up. He's always preferred to talk face to face, so maybe if I can be convincing enough in person, he won't be so worried. Or maybe I should just tell him the fucking truth. Maybe. I hate this. I don't know, man. Maybe remind him you're not f in a fucking couple. Yeah. Chase. Yeah, you shouldn't be able. Remember to... the whole breakup you're supposed to, you should have done by now correctly. Well, this text is like a you're in trouble text, and you shouldn't be able to be yeah. in trouble if you're not together. <laughs> Like, instead of breaking up, he kind of broke up by leaving and saying, like, Leo, Leo, I'm going to college at like, that In-N-Out or whatever. Yeah. And then he did, he, then he sexted him multiple times. And it's like, You're confusing Chase, him. Chase, just fucking say no to Leo. Just do it. Like, this is, you're causing this scenario because you won't just make it clear that you are not in a relationship and it's not his business what you're doing with Flynn. And it's just exhausting. <laughs> I'm not even sure I did anything really wrong, but I can't help but feel like garbage. And now my pseudo-infidelity lying game is becoming a spectacle. I, de I decided I might as well respond with at least a somewhat true response now. No? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Several question marks. Uh. <laughs> I shove my phone back in my pocket and Flynn steps back. This is so fucking stupid. Carl just looks at Flynn with a flat expression. What? Carl shrugs. Like, I said to Chase earlier, man, I won't say anything. Daxton quietly chews on his very crunchy cheese bread, looking at us from the other side of the counter. Drama? Yup. He moves from my side of the... Of he moves from my side back over around the kitchen island, grabbing his plate of food and taking a big mouthful of broccoli. You all want to watch Mad Astra? Melty, cheesy bread with broccoli. Sounds good. The salamander smiles awkwardly, gesturing to the small living room area. I'm down. Carl holds up his bottle of beer before taking a swig. Chase? Flynn? I sigh. Usually TV is a bit too passive for me when I'm trying to get my mind off stuff. Most often I turn to video games instead. Well, it's a, it's a video game adaptation. It's weird. It's a visual novel. Uh, still, Daxton <laughs> seems pretty passionate about all this. I guess it can't hurt. Sure, though. All I've ever seen of it are a few episodes, are a few of the movies. I think. So you have you actually seen a lot of it then? Have you seen a yeah. few movies? Well, it's, it's compared to Star Trek. Like how Star Trek is like six different shows that each have like seven seasons, and then oh yeah, also there's there's ten mo there's ten movies. I, I guess I don't know. I guess and it's, I've seen a couple of those movies. I saw Wrath of Khan once. Like compared to the mess that is Star Trek, where it's like, hey, there's um thousand hours of this. Have fun. <laughs> where do you start? The beginning. Oh. I mean, you can you I can never thought of that. You could probably just pick any show and start at the beginning of that show, but you could also just start at the beginning of Star Trek if you want to. But a lot of people skip the first show. Because it's the big iconic one, but it's also, it's just aged the most. Yeah, the second one, the one everyone really likes, right? Yeah, I always, I always, well, there's, there's wars there. <laughs> but, uh, he, he, 
But uh, I always vouch for this for uh, I always vouch for uh, the the next generation, and I think that people always the the common option. Like if 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 I'm over here vouching for Ed Astra, basically, then the people that vouch for Echo essentially are like the people that I think they talk about Deep Space Nine and make a big deal about that one. I think Voyage is weaker and Enterprise is kind of bad or something. And then there's the new ones. To my abject horror, when I signed up for uh, I signed up for that subscription to get that clip of Star Trek for that that like Betamax tape I have for the for the B Stars video, I was I found out that there's like four Star Treks now at the same time that are all new. It's just like they went so hard after there being no Star Trek for so long. It's weird. This is weird to have it back on the air. No one asks for these things. Oh, which ones? Uh, the ones with all the lens flare and chrome. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's just Star yeah. Trek. That's the J.J. Abrams uh, reboot universe of Ad Astra. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> sentence. <laughs> The, the, the first one starts off decently, the second one is incredibly cursed, and then the third one, it, which is made by completely different people based, or it, 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 like it's the, uh, the fans and the crew took over and kind of made that one. That one's secretly the best one, but no one watched it. What? It's just good to watch the third reboot movie and just, just skip the other ones. It's not worth it. And then, look, look at how Daxon reacts to having <laughs> heard that, though. Yeah. Timely references. <laughs> Was this even a timely reference back then? Uh, Daxton looks as, as if a bad taste just settled in his palate. <laughs> Damn. Ugh. The Tommy brothers directed those ones. They tried way too hard to be edgy and action-packed. Completely ignored proper characterization. Lots of Spock screaming. Like Lieutenant Gamorka firing the plasma emitter at the Forbesian ambassador. She's completely non-violent in the original series. <laughs> She took a vow of peaceful resolution during the violence cascade that destroyed her homeworld in the first season, but the writers just thought it would look cool for the trailers if they showed her disintegrating a guy while screaming her head off. I really like the thought-provoking philosophical stuff, not the protagonist running around killing people. Daxton <sighs> huffs, rubbing his fist against his smooth brow. I'm not exactly sure how to respond. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty not great when that happens. Uh, I like the space battles, though. You, you can't, like, just relate Chase on any kind of media level. Like, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel that way about this. I don't know. It makes me think that Chase doesn't care about media. I don't think Chase, Chase feels apathetic about most things besides Leo's dick. Yeah, he, And yeah. now that gives him conflicted problems. Yes, this <laughs> does. Of course, they're made to appeal to a casual audience. I blink. Daxton quickly holds up his hands, his eyes widening. Oh, I didn't mean that as, a, as an insult or anything. Uh, no offense taken. I offer him a reassuring nod, taking a bite of the steamed vegetables. They certainly taste fresh. Flynn must have gotten these from Peyton. Daxton stuck having to deal with us filthy casuals tonight. Again, sorry, that's not what I meant. No, I know what you mean. You dig it because you grew up with the original shit, and you have all sorts of fuzzy feelings about it. I'm actually kind of surprised to hear Flynn chime in. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, looking back, the original series is pretty dumb and cheesy. But if it wasn't for when you... For, uh, but if it wasn't for w you... Wait. But if it wasn't for you... But it wasn't for you when you were a kid. Or the tit dirts who watched it back in the 60s. Yeah, dude. Back when we were kids, Leo's dad would get us a bu all a bunch of random BHS tapes from the thrift shop in Colville every now and then. Just reminds me of, like, growing up watching, like, Abbott and Costello versus Frankenstein or whatever in black and white on VHS. Because it's just, like, whatever the fuck was on hand. I'm like, this is older than my parents. <laughs> How did I end up with this? Like, really dumb kung fu movies or straight-to-video slasher fix flicks. <laughs> It didn't even matter if they were R-rated. Sometimes on summer nights, we'd gather at Leo's place and watch a bunch of them until almost morning. They were all terrible. It was great. I find myself smiling a bit. I'd almost forgotten about all that. Oh, jeez. Flynn would always get super into them. He would yell at the screen every time the characters did something stupid. Just like in real life. Carl chuckles into his paw, grinning toothily at the Gila. Oh man, you'd get so butthurt. 
You start stomping around and slamming Leo's cabinets till you got in trouble. <laughs> what a fucking brat. A little punk child. Flynn looks off to the side. If lizards could blush, I'm almost certain he'd be doing so now. Whenever there was someone with a gun on screen, they never had any trigger discipline. It completely held their guns wrong. That's, uh... And every time, every movie, someone was being chased by some killer or whatever, they completely forgot how to run. Oh yeah, you kept count of how many times someone tripped. <laughs> what a line from Chase. That, you know, you're right. You had a little notepad with your trip tally. <laughs> Chase is at the top with like 23 yeah, trips. With how often we've talked about having a tally for Chase tripping. <laughs> That's really, really funny. <laughs> Daxton looks absolutely tickled by this revelation about Flynn. That sounds hilarious. I wish I had friends like you guys growing up so I could do that sort of thing. Flynn waves dismissively. It was alright. I remember we could never do it with TJ around. Satanic propaganda and all that, right? <laughs> He would have been fine with it if we eased him into it. We can start him off with Bloodfire Babes of Babylon. Carl nods sagely, sipping at the last bit of his beer before getting up to retrieve another from the fridge. So, Flynn, you wanna... Yeah, maybe. Daxton looks pretty elated. The amphibian's slightly oh. chubby cheeks puffed out some as he grins. He's cute. Look at his little squiggly mouth. Yeah, a little squiggly <laughs> smile. I know of some really schlocky episodes from the first few seasons of the original series. I'll put those on. Sounds good, dude. Daxton sets his plate down, fast walking to the TV of the living room. After a moment, Carl looks over at me. Nerd alert. Glass house. Yeah, I know! Like the one you live in. Such glass house, fucking Carl. With your little video games. You draw superheroes. You're playing like Halo earlier. I'm just saying, yeah. like, I don't know where you draw the line. Like, what does nerd mean to you? Yeah. Ew, media literacy. Flynn goes to slide his now empty plate into the sink, slapping Carl on the back of his head as he passes. Fucking rich coming from your neck, beard ass. Yeah. True. I was going to say, oh, yeah. I was talking about people having uh, facial hair and stuff. And I kind of forgot about Carl's giant beard. Well,. He's a goat, though, so it feels a little bit different because yeah. those animals do actually have that. But not like that. Not all the way around. That's a, that's a goofy ass human beard. Did you know that um, when uh, goats go into rut, they piss on their own beards to attract girlfriends? That sounds challenging. <laughs> they apparently can do it. What a weird. I guess they have to stick their head under. Is how they and have just to go piss for on it. their own face. <laughs> it's like all the Vlogbrothers videos about giraffe mating. Those are all their most popular videos for a long time. It's about, we're all about how giraffes have sex. <laughs> I mean, that is interesting. 2006 internet was a different time. Hey. I mean it endearingly. I also pee on my beard. Yeah, that's why I smell so good. <laughs> Across the room, Daxton waves at us. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> what is... Is that what's on their is that a sculpture on their table? I don't they have like a kind of, uh, this is not a living room I expect from them. But also <laughs> I wanna hang out and watch Ed Astor with the boys. With the with boys the homies, zero feet apart because we're gay. <laughs>